And like I mentioned earlier, that since these grooves originate on percussion, this is just my take on the drums. Try and hear it in a musical setting, and then knowing when and where and how and why to add it in. Thank you. Thank you. That was super cool. Man, welcome to Draw Me Everyone. My name is Ruben Spiker. This is Sarah Thauer. We are super stoked to have you out. Thank you so much for having me. Super stoked. So we have an amazing lesson planned for you guys. Let's get into it. We're going to be breaking down some awesome Indian grooves that you've taken from some percussion stuff and, yes. and you're going to be showing us how you apply it to the kit. First off, I want to say thank you so much for Drum Me Out for having me. Um, Indian grooves are really special to me. They I, these are the first grooves that I actually started playing as a child growing up. So Indian rhythms are expressed in many ways. One of the many ways Indian grooves are expressed are in the North Indian tradition style called bowls, tabla bowls, like gena da gena da gena gena da getina gena. Then there's the South Indian syllables known as solkatu. One thing that I want to point out that that language is incredible and that's the language that I grew up learning. I grew up studying tabla and Indian percussion. But today, what my approach is going to be more of a pattern-oriented, groove-oriented, feel-oriented style of Indian drumming. Like how we have, you know, James Brown funk uh, playing mambo in a Cuban setting. So that's the kind of stylistic approach that we're going to be taking. So the first groove that we're going to be talking about is called the Kerwa. Man, this groove is actually really special to me. Um, it's a groove in 4-4. Four, four. It can be in 2-4 as well, but for this exercise, it's going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So, you know, we got the backbeat in funk and R&B in rock. Always on the 2 and 4. So for the Kerwa, the cool thing about it is that our 
backbeats are on the uh. So one, two, a two, a three, a a boom, boom, a a a boom, boom. And there's a cool thing where I see rants on Facebook where people are like, hey, if you clap on the one and three, that's not real music. Or, you know, you better be clapping on the four because that's where the beat is at. And I'm like, hey, guys, like I cringe every time I hear that because our rhythms are always on the upbeats, on the ends. If I'm clapping on the two and four and everything's on the upbeat, we're not going to feel the pulse. So I apologize. I love to clap on the downbeats. So this is what this groove is really about. Let's just get right into it. Example number one, we got some eighth notes happening on the hi-hat. We're gonna be accenting all the downbeats with the edge of the stick and then all the ends with the tip. And we're gonna be playing all the uhs with the snare, just like a backbeat. And the kick is gonna be on the one and the three. I'm gonna play it at three different tempos. So that's usually performed at the last tempo, generally? I would say it really varies on the style. It can be performed really slow, like even at 60 BPM. Okay. Or it can be like up to like 200, 300 BPM and just Whoa. burning fast. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So what percussion instrument is that one taken from? We have the, the tabla, North Indian instrument. We have the tolak, we have the toll. I would say like this is the most popular Indian groove. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so I this think is it's like the one to learn. If you want to impress some people from the Indian culture, just pop up and play this beat. So that'll give you some incentive to learn these grooves. Cool, cool. Yeah. So the second groove that we're going to go to, um, it's going to be the same groove, but we're going to add some ghost notes to it. We're going to add a ghost note on the E. So, you know, let's check out some James Brown or let's uh, refer to some James Brown grooves. That style is made up of so many ghost notes. Even mm. if you hear a lot of other genre, ghost notes really make up the feel. And I would say it's a very similar situation to this as well. You need to involve some of that feeling into it with the ghost notes. Um, when you take Jay Dilla swing, you have Cuban swing, you have New Orleans, you have jazz, you have a bunch of these styles. And all of these styles have a distinct swing to them. And I would say the same thing to this. There, we have it really straight. We got it kind of in the middle, and then we got it heavily swung. I personally like to play it in between the two. Maybe I can demonstrate a little bit of the feel with this exercise B and add some ghost notes to demonstrate. Sounds good. And I'll play it at three tempos. Are the, the, the different levels of swing, is it, is it wrong to learn one level or is, are they all used? So I would maybe relate that to hip hop. You know, when you have like boom bap trap or J, like the Jay Dilla swing. It's like, if you listen to the music, you should know how to apply what and when. Gotcha. And some, like when I play with some musicians, they swing like crazy and I'm like, holy smokes, I'm not used to that. <laughs> or some musicians, they just play it like right down the middle. So I guess it's just, really being able to hear it and knowing when to apply it. Got you. Yeah. Cool. Maybe let's hear that one more time, a little yeah. bit slower. Sure. And then uh, just try out super straight again, and then maybe if you want to try out the swing again. But sure. This is a super cool rhythm. Thanks. Yeah. Super slow.
I really like the swing feel on that one. That feels really nice. It feels yeah. nice. Cool. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next one you have here, mm -hmm. which was um, variation number one. Yes. Using the bell. Yeah, so for this next one, we're going to be using the bell of the hi-hat. I love to get super creative with this because you know what? There are no rules of these grooves. It's your interpretation. So let's check out using this bell. And we're going to use this bell on basically every downbeat, and it's going to follow by two sixteen notes on the hi-hat. And we're going to play some ghost notes and move some of the kicks around. So check it out. Is there a certain setting where you would use the bell more, or just like to cut through a little more, or is it just you're feeling that out? If it's like a little bit quieter, you won't use the bell, and then. So I would say, depending on the song, depending on the part, like maybe at a B section or like an A one or A two section, I guess it's just trying to figure out where in the song that fits, or listening to the other percussionists. Some of them pop up some country, some bells, where they're accenting all the downbeats. So why not follow them and you know mm. try it out? Yeah. So it's again kind of trying to. Uh, mimic someone playing bells in the background, kind of add in some more textures. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, I kind of imagine this as the bells. I imagine these two kind of as the percussion instruments. Okay. So we'll move on to the second one, the B, actually. We'll be using the bell again, but we're going to be putting the bell on the ants. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch in between the two, and maybe we can hear more of a difference. Sure, between the uh, between A and B. Two A and two B. Got you. Okay. All right. And you can maybe hear the difference in the feeling as well. So putting the accent on the one and then switching to the end. Exactly. Cool. All right. So number three, we're going to actually involve some cross stick to it. So the cool thing about this groove is there's different dynamics on the tabla. So the cross stick is emulating a sound that's maybe more of a mezzo piano. And then when we go to the snare, it's like a forte. So let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Sounds yeah. good. That's probably one, I think I like the texture change between the cross stick and snare on that one. I think that's my favorite one so far. Yay, yeah, it that's feels cool really one. great. Next up you had um, experimenting with sound sources. Yes. And so going back again to how we're imitating percussion instruments. So there's this cool barrel shaped drum called the dolek, bass side and the high side. And I would say it has very similar technique to the tabla as well. So if you can play tabla, in my opinion, I, you can play dolak as well, and you can kind of switch in between the two. So what the cool thing is about this groove is that a lot of dolak players wear a pinky ring. And mm -hmm. what they do is they hit the wood of the barrel with a pinky ring, and they usually do that on the downbeats. And how we keep talking about the uhs, or I keep talking about the uhs, is that they're hitting on the downbeat on the wood, and then they're hitting the upbeats with their index finger on the drum. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do when I'm playing in a gig or something like that, and I have to emulate that sound, I'm like, all right, we got the rims of the toms, and that can emulate the ring on the pinky hitting the wood. And then the hi can be on the ends, and we got the uhs happening on the snare with various kick patterns.
So it's just cool. experimenting with the sound sources and adapting the grooves that we play. So you can kind of take all those other things, mix mm -hmm. them up and make your own ideas out of them with that. Exactly. Cool, just by switching the sound source. Yeah, it makes cool. the world of a difference. Cool. So we've been on the hi-hat for a bit too long. Let's move on to the right cymbal. So what I like to do when we move to the right cymbal, the hi-hat's not doing anything. So I'm just like, let's incorporate some feet. Um, there are a lot of options on quarters, on eighths, on the ends, on two and four, on the ones and the threes. Feel free to try them out. Feel free to see what works for you. So for something like that, when you're incorporating your foot, would you recommend just taking out half of your limbs at first to try, you know, get your foot comfortable with that? Yeah, or what I recommend is that sometimes I personally have a tendency when learning new things is thinking about the technical aspect a bit too much. But each limb has a voice, each limb has a melody. So I would say for this exercise, the hi-hat, the kick, the snare, and the ride all have a melody. So I personally believe that if you sing it, um, you'll be able to play it. Um, so next up you had a variation on that. Mm-hmm, I did. So this cool exercise is a variation, a Kerouac variation in in two and four. Sorry, in two four. <laughs> Time signature two four. Um, what I chose for this variation is to play the ends on the bell of the ride and the downbeats on the right cymbal. So let's just give it a listen. some like really cool you know ideas for playing some fusion music or some gospel stuff even with that one that's really cool totally you totally can that's awesome so that's like a very versatile one to use yeah i definitely try to apply these grooves in my everyday playing in whatever i play cool because they're really they have a really me melodic flavor to it cool and we'll talk about how at the end you can apply these to something else but yeah we'll keep moving along and then we'll get to that at the very mm -hmm. end so um, number seven was adding stack to the Kerwa, and I like how you told me about that earlier. Um, yes. Basically, this was like your idea to copy the hand clapping. Yeah, so a lot of these beautiful Indian grooves, the culture involves people, dancing, community. So when we play these grooves in public, everyone's kind of clapping. And when I mentioned to you earlier, sometimes I have to do these gigs where there's no other percussionist, so I have to cover all these parts. Um, there's someone playing the country and highlighting the claps of the people. So I made this kind of thing up. I'm just like, okay, let's bring a stack to these gigs and let me see if I imitate the people clapping or experiment thinking of it as a clap on different accents, like on the one and the three, on all mm. the quarters, on the two and the four. Let me see if it makes a difference and maybe the audience's reaction is gonna change. And it really did. As soon as I started kind of hitting the corners, everyone's like, whoa, and they, <laughs> they followed along, so. It really makes a difference. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's check out how that sounds. You had some like, uh, or just checking that into a beat. Yeah, just I'm just here. gonna put it in a Kerawa. Sounds good. Yeah. So pick one of the ones we've gone over and try applying that yourself. So. Definitely, and just imagine people dancing and clapping. Or what I like to do is when learning a new genre, I watch dancers, I watch how people bob their head and move their body. And then you kind of, that's an indication of kind of what to place where and when. So let's just get into it. Sounds good. All right.
awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. Sweet. So next up, we had a fill notated. So yes. we can, after you've learned all these awesome grooves, now you'll have something you can transition into different ideas with. Definitely. So this groove, sorry, this fill is a very simple fill. I'm just gonna give the hand gestures first. It's right, left, left, right, left, left, right. And all the rights are gonna be accented. And it's gonna start on beat three. So one, two, ba do do ba do do ba. One, two, ba do do ba do do ba. Let's give it a listen. Sounds good. recommend is try voicing it on the kit putting maybe the rights on the toms or even maybe putting your left hand so let's just try a little voicing sounds good I'm gonna put it in a groove setting, playing a Kerouac groove and playing this fill. I'm gonna play it at a relatively medium tempo and then maybe bring it up. Sounds good, cool. Sounds good. That's like a really effective pattern, so definitely take that, apply it to like every part of your kit you can think of and yeah. get creative with it. That's Especially because really cool. this music really stems from dancing and community. You don't want to throw somebody off with some crazy fill. I feel like this fill, it comes from the percussion instruments, of course, as mentioned, but there's a flow to it as well. Awesome pattern, awesome fill. You can use that in like tons of different places. So. Tons, yeah. Cool. Let's move on to the six, eight patterns we had going on here. Yes. Um, yeah, some really cool stuff with that. Yes. So the first six, eight pattern, number nine, is gonna be a variation of a six, eight groove in a garba setting. So I'm just gonna quickly say what garba is. Garba stems from, sorry, garba is a dance that is very popular in the Gujarati tradition. And it is, it, people dance, the Garba, the dance, in a festival, a nine-day festival called Navratri, and it happens once a year. One thing I'd like to mention is that Garba involves like thousands of people dancing, and there's a lot of percussionists that come together and play this rhythm together, play these rhythms together. What I'd also like to say is that drum kit traditionally is not involved in this genre at all. So I'm gonna be using the toms because the percussion instrument that is really used is called the dole. And that is like a gigantic barrel drum that you wear around your neck and there's a low side and there's a high side. So that sound can be emulated again with the tom. So let's, cool. let's give it a listen. Sounds good. down for this exercise is that having the hi-hat open and then closed, again, that's imitating the bells, the country of it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's move on to the variation number 10. Yes. So the variation number 10, it's called the dhadra groove. Dhadra, dhadra is a tal, which is a rhythmic cycle, and it is a six-beat cycle. This tal is so beautiful because it's played in styles called ghazal and a bunch of beautiful romantic songs with beautiful melodies. The bowls for the dhadra are 
Dhadhinna, 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 dhadhinna. What we're going to experiment with this variation is a teka. A teka is a variation and a rhythmic pattern that comes from the tala. And the bowls for this are da, din, din, da, din, din, da, din, din, da, din, din. So let's take that and voice that on the kit. And it's going to be, we're going to play it like a ballad style. So da on a tabla is played with the bass and the right hand. So on the kit, bass, kick, uh, hand, right hand, your snare. Then is kind of more of an open sound, but also has the bass and the high. So we'll keep the kick and the snare there as well. Then we got thin. Thin is a beautiful ringing sound. I would say it's not as powerful as ta. So thin, maybe mezzo forte, we got a cross stick going on. We can use that. Then we have ta, which is like bam in your face. So we're gonna put on the snare. <laughs> okay, so let's just try playing it. Cool. All right. Cool. Again, very versatile groove you could use in like very many versatile. different places. So. And you know when you hear like gospel music, there's a lot of beautiful play on the hi-hat. So a lot of tabla players, when they're playing this style and this style, they're kind of fo following the vocalist and the other instrumentations. Mm. So they do a lot of beautiful subtleties and ghost notes and melodic lines on the tabla. So I kind of steal all, all their lines and I do it on the hi-hat while keeping kind of these two consistent. Awesome. So a lot of room to play around. Cool. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, let's move on to number 11. So this is one of my favorite grooves. It's a fun, a vibe, a fun 6-8 kind of groove. And this can be applied into a garba setting, you know, Bollywood songs, anything. So let's awesome. check it out. Awesome. Those are some really awesome grooves and some couple of nice fills that you've shown us. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so yeah, I think now you mentioned you're going to play a track and yes. you're going to show us basically how um, you can start using this in, yeah. in like, you know, a different setting other than any music, how you can start applying it. But um, before mm -hmm. we do that, um, do you have anything else you wanted to add? I would just say one thing is that when I'm trying to learn grooves or licks or tops or whatever it may be, Sometimes I feel like the habit is to get the sticking and just shed it till you get it and maybe try and squeeze it into, every, into everything that you do. Um, what I have learned and continue to do is try and hear it in a musical setting and then knowing when and where and how and why to add it in. Because when we were going through the different ride variations or hi-hat variations, it wasn't like a technical exercise like from the new breed or something like that. There was a purpose for each and every ghost note and every hit. In my mind, I'm hearing the song. So I would recommend if you'd like to dig into these grooves, check them out, look up Karawa, look up different variations and understand the grooves. Mm. Thank you again for coming out. This is an amazing, uh, amazing lesson. And make sure you come check out Drum Your Edge, check out all the other stuff we're gonna be filming. We got an amazing course with like 15 of these grooves. We'll, we'll go way more in depth with this and everything, so yeah. yeah. The next song is by Kaz Rodriguez, shout out. It's called Gaia. <laughs> 